Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nathan. I am one of the co-founders of the Election Truth Alliance. Um, a little bit about me, my background is in cybersecurity, information systems, as a 25 Bravo computer tech specialist in the Army Reserves. Got my degree in network security and information systems, commissioned as a signal officer in the Army National Guard. Work with uh, radio communications, planning, tactics, all the good stuff. So what we're gonna do is this video is gonna highlight a recent a release we had with Dr. Walter Mebbin and his analysis. So we're going to jump right in. The ETA, nonpartisan nonprofit organization that I helped found with Jive and Lily, amazing co founders. Um, we have been investigating the 2024 presidential election and past elections. And we have highlighted a Pennsylvania analysis of three counties. And so we provided that data to Dr. Walter Mebbin. Um, he is a, he's honestly one of the leading U.S. election fraud experts. Um, he had, he's renowned for his work in uh, forensics and statistical detection of election fraud. And so his analysis is called eForensics. It's a model that identifies anomalies based on turnout and, and some other um, statistical studies. And so some key notes is he has applied his model to elections in Europe. He has authored papers disputing election fraud, such as 2019's uh, Bolivia, Bolivian election, so it wasn't, he, he found that although there was some concerns of uh, potential election fraud, it was not significant enough at all to change the outcome of that election. So he has done both highlighted elections and um, argued against election fraud for multiple elections in multiple years. And he founded a paper, he authored, I believe, a, another paper as well that found no credible claims of election fraud for the winning candidate of the 2020 presidential election. So that's just some of his work. Um, some of the other con contributions he's done is he was um, given a grant by USAID to help create an election forensic kit that was hosted on their website portal. That is no longer up. cannot find that anymore. But um, it's, it's his collection of st uh, statistical methods. He is kind of the go-to guy for election forensics in the U.S. He is the leading expert. And so he continues to research and develop and and highlight elections and monitor them around the world. And he analyzes the three counties in Pennsylvania. And so those three counties are Philadelphia, Erie, and Allegheny County. These are some of the largest counties in the state. Um, Philadelphia is, is the most heavily populated. And then Allegheny is the second, Erie is the fifth. Pennsylvania, as we said uh, in our report, they vote by three vote types, provisional mail and election day. And what we're going to highlight is that although they did conduct a 2% audit and a, another larger audit, we're going to show you our statistical concerns that the ETA produced and the concerns of Dr. Walter Mebbin. Mail-in, it, it seems a little more chaotic and random. Um, the way you read these graphs is this is, you know, there's a red and a blue bar per county. The red is the Republicans, the blue is the Democrats, and this is the presidential race being shown here. So 0% is the amount of votes the Senate got for each candidate. And so if you're above the line, you got more votes than the Senate. If you're below the line, you got less votes than your party's Senate candidate. So what we see is in Maryland, it's a little more chaotic. Um, Trump's overperforming a majority of the time, but still it's a little, a little more chaotic. We see that on election day, a majority of the underperformance for Harris is this one vote type. Um, what we highlight is this is a little too uniform. We see this a little too consistently across multiple counties. And we, we bring up a question of if you were changing, deleting, or manipulating votes for one candidate, um, it may cause this drop off or this down ballot difference. And so we do have some other analysis, but Dr. Walter Mebbin, his findings when we gave him the actual voting data, he gave us his three county report. This is a working paper. And some of the, the, the takeaways is he found with his eForensic model, approximately up to 28,000 or so um, distorted votes. I mean, th these are anomalies. And so this is 24% of the statewide margin of victory for Trump in this case. And two other takeaways is Philadelphia, largest county, had um, some of the most significant anomalies. And the highest concentration was Election Day, as we just showed you for our analysis. So we do have this paper hosted. It's electiontruthalliance.org, Mebbin PA working paper. You can just go to our website, go to analysis, and you'll find this. This is one snippet where he's showing 
um, that model of all the precincts across those three counties and just kind of doing an analysis. I'll be honest, his analysis is very dense. His paper is very dense. We summarized it right there for you. Um, he has other works and other papers. If you want to understand what he's actually doing, he has a foundational paper that explains kind of how his analysis works and, and the foundation. But really what he's looking at is he's looking at any correlation um, for turnout across multiple precincts. Very similar to what we're doing. His is just far more advanced and does multiple different analysis. So as mentioned, the ETA, we published um, our Pennsylvania analysis looking at those three counties that we gave to Dr. Walter Mevin. I um, mean, in this case, we're just going to highlight our findings yet again. We don't quantify our findings the same way he does. Um, we do have ways of doing it. We quantified somewhere around 30,000 up to or less than 30,000 potentially irregular or you know anomalous votes. But in my opinion, I feel like that might be a low estimate. It's very difficult to tell. And we'll, uh, we'll improve our ability to uh, estimate going forward. But so we have a heat map analysis to show you just to show you those concerns more visually. And so this is the three counties in Pennsylvania we'll highlight. But this is based off the work of Peter Klimek et al. So they published the paper, Statistical Detection of Systematic Election Irregularities. And so he is a Austrian physicist. He's known for his election forensics. He's applied his work to all kinds of European elections from Russia, Switzerland, Uganda. Um, and it's doing the same thing that we've been wanting to do, which is you know looking for anomalies that may be caused by ballot stuffing or vote manipulation. His Model utilizes heat maps, and his model says a free and fair election um, with no concerning, you know, concerning manipulation is going to look like a circle. And so he shows that modeled here on the right. Then he shows that if there is manipulation, it may look like something of Russia's 2011 2012 comet trails. And I'll kind of briefly explain what would cause these shapes. So we did apply this to US elections, the 24. We're looking at Ohio, they are nonpartisan. State Board District 5. I um, mean, we see that more circular, normal modeled fair election here. And so, what this is really showing, it's showing that is there any changing happening as turnout increased across precincts? Um, to put this in a better verbiage, what we're looking at is a snapshot. So, we're looking at all the precincts after all the votes are counted. And we're saying from precincts with low turnout to precincts with high turnout, which is that x axis. Are we seeing any significant correlation with the amount of votes the candidate is getting? And in this case, this is just Trump, or sorry, this is a winning candidate, not the Trump um, votes. It's nonpartisan, so this is vinegar. Um, we're going to highlight Trump's votes in the next portions. But we don't see a correlation where precincts with higher turnout versus precincts with lower turnout, Trump is winning or less or more. Uh, in this case, vinegar is winning less or more. It's, it's that circle. There's no correlation. So same thing. Mail-in, Erie, this is that uh, fifth largest, I believe. And we don't see, we see that more circular, normal expected pattern. We don't see any precincts shifting up into the right or up as turnout had increased or as vote share had increased. And then here's election day. We're going to highlight again, we're looking at all the precincts in the county. And we're seeing that in precincts um, of higher turnout, Trump is growing in the amount of votes he's getting across all precincts. Um, there's a correlation between the amount of votes Trump is getting and the amount of turnout there was. This is mirroring concerns seen in European elections of manipulation, um, such as Russia. They have this comet trail. That means a majority of the votes are unmanipulated, and then you have precincts being manipulated up and to the right, and then you actually have stuffing, potentially, where you're sitting at 100% turnout. In our case, we don't ever really see 100% turnout, but we do see that there could be, I mean, this anomaly suggests that they're potentially digitally stuffing ballots, um, adding in synthetic or voting for people who didn't actually vote, and they're doing it uniformly across precincts, and it's voting pre predominantly for Trump. That would cause this effect. We're going to be publishing some more of this, but ultimately it comes down to you know, why is this a big deal? Well, leading U.S. election fraud expert, this demands that we investigate. This demands that we try and get our hands on uh, the paper ballots, do an actual audit, because if there is election fraud occurring in our elections, not only for the 24 election, we have concerns with the midterms and upcoming elections. So we need to make sure that our machines aren't potentially manipulating votes, which is our concern. We're seeing a tabulation issue. So we need to audit. 
Um, for those of you who want to support us, go to our website, electiontruthalliance.org. You can donate to help us fight this fight. Um, we've been working with some of the counties, but we're looking at litigation if the counties aren't willing to step up. Um, we have lawyers to re you know, retain and, and help us go about the process here. I need you to call. Um, we have a audit advocacy toolkit on our website. It's under resources. I want you to call the Secretary of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I want you to call their governors. I want you to reach out to your county officials in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania as a whole, um, but any of those three counties really. And all we want is we want audits. We want to validate and we want to verify. Um, I would be happy to be wrong. I'd, I'd be happy to you know get our hands on um, the paper ballots and audit any of these precincts 100%. Um, people ask us, you know, why did the audits that were conducted not catch this? There's a few things. Is one, our audits would be insufficient to catch digital manipulation because if you're manipulating the votes by adding in digital votes, they don't exist physically. So an audit wouldn't catch that unless you audit 100% of something um, and find excess. You're not going to do that with a 2% because you're just going to check 2% of the votes. They're going to likely match. There's a few other things we see under sampling in like the larger areas. And we are seeing in places of higher turnout this, this correlation benefiting the Republican candidates. So a lot of the audits focus the smaller areas. So thank you so much for uh, your time. We're going to be publishing some new stuff here soon. We're working on North Carolina. We're working on some of the other swing states, such as um, Wisconsin. And then we will continue to highlight Iowa. If you've not seen our Iowa analysis, um, we have a video out for that. And we will continue to push for accountability for audits. And uh, we will go from there. So thank you guys so much. Um, more to come.